Here we go. Another time for another 10 out of 10 episode from Mystery Echidna. Let's get it. I just love watching good anime. ReZero Season 2 has had an amazing adaptation so far, and this episode definitely exceeded my expectations as always. Bef yeah, <laughs> 25 weeks in a row, it's gonna be the same intro, baby, and I'm all for it. Before I begin, I just want to say a few words. Yeah. All right, now that that's over with, let's begin. We okay. We start out right where we left off from the he said a few words. Subaru talking to Beatrice, who now looks like a hentai protagonist. Subaru takes the gospel from her, opens it up, and what does he find? Nothing. Nothing. But he does make the connection that Beatrice was contracted by the Witch of Greed, who ordered mm. her to wait in the library for that person to come and kill her. I wonder what kind of mental gymnastics a kidnap will do to justify his wife who did nothing wrong to Biko who has been placed here for 400 years with an empty promise which might have been made on a whim. Notice how Beatrice doesn't even react when Subaru ruins her gospel. Betelgeuse would have flipped out if something like that happened to his gospel, but True. Beatrice doesn't seem to care. Because this is not a gospel, it's a grimoire. This is because Beatrice understands that her contract is pointless and her life has no purpose. Her existence is meaningless and she's completely given up. She yeah. wants to die, but spirits can't commit suicide, so all this time she's been waiting for someone to come and kill her. This it's not necessarily just coming to kill her, right? It's she wants someone to free her, but it's the nature of spirits not like the importance of contracts promises spirits right and the fact that she was not able to complete hers is now making her feel like her life is entirely pointless and she's fine with just dying but she also can't kill herself but she also clings on to the hope that Subaru could be the prophesized person this episode added a bit of context to beatrice's behavior in the past during season one when she tells subaru to at least die where i can't see you mm -hmm. that's because watching him die would have made beatrice means that he's not the one and I would have, again, just hoped on somebody, but that was not the person. They just gone. That would hurt me more. Beatrice jealous. Beatrice is envious of death. That's also why- Really? Is this specifically true? I thought that this might have to do with her clinging on to the hope of Subaru being the one, but if he obviously dies, then that possibility is gone. So is she actually envious of death here? That's why she said, don't do this shit in front of me. And when Beatrice also stopped Subaru from killing himself with a broken shard of glass from the previous loops, right? I thought that was just more of her not wanting her potential chosen one to die in front of her. I don't know. Why she offered to protect Subaru in season one. She didn't want to be left behind by yet another person. Mm -hmm. Like Juice. <laughs> Bitch, I've been alive for 17. Beatrice gives a short monologue begging Subaru to kill her, and her voice actress really deserves some type of award after this performance. You can just hear the passion and desperation in the voice acting, and that really made this moment stand out to me. I also loved how Subaru tries to say Shamak, but Beatrice interrupts him and uses the spell herself. Almost yeah. like she knows that Subaru shouldn't be using magic with his- Remember, his gate is still fucked up. I don't know why they constantly bring this up, but like, they're making this a very important part. I'm not sure what Tapi is cooking up. Why is he continuously making Subaru's gate messed up? There has to be some kind of mechanic that has to do with some sort of powers for Subaru later on. That's why he's setting this up, right? I refuse to believe this is just a trivial uh, detail of his gate being constantly broken and never being healed up. There's gotta be some reason that we just don't know yet. Broken gate. This implies that Beatrice truly does care about Subaru deep down, even if she doesn't want to admit it. Mm -hmm. Now, as much as I'd like to announce that we just got another new lolly, lolly the truth <laughs> is, Melee isn't a new lolly. She doesn't- she's an old lolly. Also, she doesn't act like a child either. She acts way more mature. So, maybe- I, I think she is a human, but she definitely does not have the same level of intelligence like Petra. This girl is pretty mature, I think. She's an old lolly. An old lolly? You mean like Beatrice? Baba. What I mean is, Lolly Baba's debut was in episode 5 of season yep. 1, so she isn't exactly a new character. Barusu, I'm going to use my clairvoyance. Give me a moment, alright? Okay. Rabbits? Fetch me their soul. Oh. Melee can control mob beasts, which Basically. raises some questions. 
So, the thing... Oh, thank you, Probe, for the tier 1, man. I appreciate that. But the thing that tossed me off, the logical inconsistency with her controlling powers, has to do with how the bald shaman dog didn't have a horn, which implies that, you know, it's not just implication, but it's a rule that in ReZero, if you break the horn of a witch fiend, you can control them. And I thought that's how Melee was controlling that dog, which controlled other things. But it turns out that was just another red herring, just like another distraction, because it seems like Melee can just straight up control mob beasts. Horn or no horn, this girl can continue. Like, there's dogs, snakes, bats, the guilty low. But, you know what the craziest thing would be? And this will probably never happen. Imagine a combo, like a combo attack, like strategy, where, I, I don't know... How much beast taming, taming shit she could do, but imagine a situation where we can fight together. Where Subaru literally uses I can return by that taunt, AoE, spikes the miasma, witch beast comes after him. Melee then controls those witch beasts. Like, it would be such a fucking powerful combo. But this bitch working with Elsa, and we need to take care of her. Can she control the great rabbit? If I don't know. That would be insane, right? Like, oh, I... This girl showing up that can just control witch fiends is a very important mechanic, right? Like, the great beasts though? That's a bit too much, right? That's, that's, that's a bit way too much, but if she can, that's an answer for the, the great rabbit. So, then Melee could potentially be a solution to the rabbit problem if Maybe. Subaru were to somehow become allies with her. Would be crazy. However, it would take a lot of... If Subaru somehow becomes allies with her. Is the kid not hinting here? Because I know his ass has read the fucking source material. If we, honestly, not even just the Great Rabbit shit, right? Just like the whole strategy I just mentioned about the combo attack of taunt, lure beasts in, then control the beast that got lured in. It'd be fucking crazy. Convincing to get her to switch sides, and it's possible that the Great Rabbit's too powerful to obey her. Anyway, we. She is not the reason the White Whale was there, because Better Goose in the web novel was hinting shit, meaning the cult was already behind the whale being placed at the Flugel Highway, which implies that Lai Bikentos most likely controlled the whale and placed them there. We get to see a short fight scene that puts Beatrice's power on full display. Beatrice defeats Elsa using Minya, a shadow Minya. magic spell. Remember, shadow magic or yin magic is supposed to just be debuffs. Yeah, but there's offensive ways to do it. It's like she makes... Well, it's like... The debuffs are in the form of this crystals, and if it lands, you just become crystallized or decay. It's crazy, huh? But Beatrice found a way to use it offensively by crystallizing the mana. Elsa yeah. literally crumbles into pieces, but somehow survives, and that says a lot about Elsa. In Got season some blessing. one, she survived a direct yep. attack from Reinhardt, the most powerful character in ReZero. And at this point, she already lost her cape. Because I was focused on her cape thing. Their cloak that might have been a super armor, but she already lost this shit here. She gets hit by it. She survives it. And I'm like, what? Some sort of blessing, right? It wasn't shown how she survived, but now it's become a bit more clear. Elsa has some method of escaping death. Yeah. We literally watched her die this episode, but she somehow came back seconds later. What is she, like a fucking cat? Like, got nine lives? So Elsa is probably a lot more overpowered than we previously thought. Yep. And if Beatrice had known this, she might still be alive. Underestimating Elsa results in Beatrice being stabbed, and I gotta admit, as heartbreaking as it was, her death was an amazing scene. I didn't want Beatrice to die, but those effects were really cool. Just <laughs> The spirit leaving her body was pretty cool, yeah. The lesser spirits like this, just like moving around, it is pretty fun. Watching a spirit evaporate into the atmosphere, it, it was a nice scene. Anyway, with her last breath, she teleports Subaru back to the sanctuary. Which is the actual rock, right? It's the teleportation rock, and I think that she is probably putting mana into it or some sort of activating it, some sort of similar thing that happens when this thing touches the barrier, right? Ports Subaru back to the sanctuary where once again it's snowing. And as oh we know, snow is never a good sign in ReZero. Snow is bad. At this point, Subaru wants another tea. It's just funny because Memory Snow was just like a happy slice of life movie. But it, there was also a lot of hints in the movie, but you know, it's like snow was not bad there. But now, whenever it snows, it's just like, uh-oh, did Amelia die? What happened? 
But we know the snow is now all raw as well. He parties, so he heads into the tomb looking for the witch, but runs into Amelia instead, who also looks like a hentai protagonist. Mm -hmm. It's revealed that Amelia has completely lost her mind. Without Puck being there to support her, she's gone totally insane, and Subaru was really upset about that. <laughs> He accuses Roswell of making it snow in the sanctuary. True. Roswell replies. Did you hear that from me? Implying that the other loop, right? Did I already tell you this shit? Because now we know he can't regress, which is the crazy shit. This is when Subaru realizes that Roswell knows about Return by Death. Mm -hmm. However, he has a slight misunderstanding about the ability. He doesn't know that Subaru has to die to start over. So Roswell casually kills Rom and Garfield with his martial arts. No fancy magic needed, no epic music playing, just stone-cold, emotionless murder. Ro like, what is this martial arts, bro? I thought this dude was just a magician. But... His physical strength now, I'm not sure if you can imbue your mana, your body in mana, and therefore it's like a reinforced attack. Maybe that already is the basis of martial arts, but like, this dude can fight. Not just magic. No, he can fight bare hands. Oswald says that they were interfering with the discussion, but in reality, he murdered them to give Subaru an incentive to start over. This was mm -hmm. actually Roswell attempting to control Subaru. He his interpretation, sorry, Roswell said that, oh, now we can have a conversation, but I guess it is more of just creating fucked up scenarios where Subaru will now be forced to reset. Wanted to make Subaru's life hell in order to force him to restart, essentially using Subaru's ability to further his own selfish goals. At this point, Roswell was pretty much done with the loop, and he wanted Subaru to hurry up and start mm -hmm. a new one. And the interesting thing is that he's actually coming out saying this shit and he knows that Subaru will now have this knowledge that Roswell knows that he can regress someone as cautious and meticulous as him why would he do this here it feels intentional I doubt he's doing this out of impulse like Subaru would unless Roswell is making a mistake here it just feels like it's not in his best interest to let him know of this shit unless the Grimoire told him to do it but I don't think so feels like the Grimoire told him of the perfect run in this loop but the current Subaru couldn't do it. Or he had no qualms of just saying, fuck it, I'm gonna just kill Ram and, you know, Garfield. And, you know, let's just have a conversation. That with the hopes of him just regressing at that point too. It's... Was it a mistake? Was it intentionally done? Strategically? Did he want Subaru to know more? Because he's taken too long? I don't know. So after Big Chungus appears, Roswell allows himself to be devoured while Subaru escapes. We didn't get to see how Subaru escapes the route. The Ryuzu Lolly clones, as well as the cathedral being on fire because the people of the sanctuary didn't want to fight the... even get eaten by the rabbits. But the interesting thing Roswell says here is about his devotion to one thing. And this line goes strictly with how Mother told us about how as long as the ends justifies the means, everything's kind of okay. Right? Because Roswell's saying here, if you have one thing that you want to protect, don't care about anything else and just focus on that one thing and you can slowly become more like me. Like, Roswell is saying some crazy shit. And what, what is the one thing that Roswell probably wants? Echidna to release her from Volcanica's seal. And as long as everything goes according to that plan, he's perfectly fine with sacrificing anything. But do we want to become that kind of person? Right? Mom said, hey, it's okay as long as you get shit done in the end. Subaru was like, really? The ends justify the means? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That dialogue was very specific. So this is kind of showing in a future where Subaru does adopt Roswell's philosophies, he will become that kind of man where he will easily discard anything for the sake of just Amelia, which I'm not sure if I want him to be like that. I don't know. But good mentorship, Roswell. Thank you for the advice, I guess. While Subaru escapes. We didn't get to see how Subaru escapes the rabbits, but in the web novel, he commands the Ryuzu clones to fight the rabbits while he makes his way to the tomb. But anyway, mm -hmm. on his way there, he sustains fatal injuries and starts losing a lot of blood. Then he finds Amelia, who kisses him as his life fades away. Now, on the paper, taste of this death. doesn't sound like a bad death, but to Subaru, this wasn't really Amelia. It was a distorted, mind-broken replica that shouldn't exist. Even mm. though she was there to comfort him as he died, Subaru felt more alone than ever before. It's so funny 
or more fucked up that just when you thought you had enough troubles, right? What was the initial issue that we had? And Melee not being able to clear the trial, but that's fine. But the longer we took here, people at the mansion would die. And now we know that issue. But the longer... And, and now, there's some other shit with Garfield also getting suspicious. And there's the existence of White Rabbits that's gonna kill us if we take too long. And now, it's like Emily can also go mind break. There is so many different things that just could go wrong in this arc. The amount of challenges we need to overcome is just... Stupid. Replica that shouldn't exist. Even though she was there to comfort him as he died, Subaru felt more alone than ever before. His most gruesome death was definitely the rabbits from episode 8, but I yeah. think this was actually his worst loop overall. Remember last episode, on his way to the mansion, Subaru I've seen was hell. confident. He was smiling, and it almost felt like this was going to be his final loop of the season. He got us. He got us good. But I knew that this wasn't going to be the final loop of the season. Or this arc. You know why? Because I'm watching this shit fucking like... <laughs> it's like what? Four years after it released. And people have told me that the entire 25 episodes is arc 4. So we're not even halfway done. There's no way this is going to be the perfect run. We're going to keep failing. But everything that could have possibly went wrong became a reality. Everyone's dead, Emilia's gone insane, and Subaru is bleeding to death as he watches the world he had hoped for collapse on top of him. The kiss of death is one of the top five most iconic moments in Arc 4, and this final scene was definitely the creepiest moment so far in the anime. It was. The soundtrack playing, the music, the, the children's sound box, the toy box music playing, it, it's so creepy and haunting. <sighs> and it's all distorted too, the visuals, man. Like this shit too. Look at the way it cuts. And then it shows us his like wounds he sustained from the bunnies. Ugh. Oh. The cinematic effects really made this moment feel like a scene out of a horror movie. And the new OST was flawlessly spine chilling. It kind of reminded me of Lavender Town for some reason. But the important mm. takeaway from this episode is that all of Subaru's problems just got even more difficult. Yep. Beatrice is suicidal, Elsa can't die, Melee's a new threat, Amelia's yep. going crazy, the Great Rabbit attacks, Roswell's a villain, Garfield's Garfield. got anger issues, yeah. Bishop breeds up to something, no one can leave the sanctuary, oh, the child man. is still a thing, and oh yeah, Rem's asleep. What do we do, man? Uh, I don't know. I'm about to figure something out. Uh, what is the solution? I don't know, <laughs> cause we got, cause like we got, we gotta let him. If we're gonna, if if the thing that fucked up here is Amelia mind breaking, but Ross was gonna make his snow early. We gotta beg him not to make his snow, please, bro. Stop it. Why are you doing this? If he makes this shit so, I guess we have to clear the sanctuary trials first and then go to the mansion. And we can't clear the mansion shit first, or else things get fucked up here first, right? And Elsa will not kill until. Like the fifth day or something, right? She's just getting there early, so maybe we have to clear the shit at the sanctuary first. Somehow. I don't know how though, because Amelia's taking too long. But somehow make Amelia pass the trial. Somehow free the fucking sanctuary barrier. Somehow take the people like Garfield and maybe Roswell and make us help fight against Elsa in free vehicle. I don't know. But it, it, it's feeling like we cannot just go to the mansion and solve things as it is. I feel like we need to sway, like, everything hinges on Amelia being able to clear a trial and removing the barrier. But despite all that, we're not even halfway done with the season, and we got to watch a really great episode today, so... I gotta say it was a good day. Yep. I know some people complained about the art last episode, but it honestly... Kinda looks kinda wonky here. Honestly, didn't bother me at all. I've noticed a couple frames that looked a bit weird, but I don't like ReZero for the art and the animation. I like... I care about the deep lore, story, world building. I don't really care. I mean, of course I want better animation, but like, this is looking kind of wonky, but hey, another 10 out of 10 episode, right? Three zero for the story, the characters, the world, the voice acting, the music, the theories, and the community. I fell in love with ReZero when I was just reading text from mm. the web novel, so to me, the art and animation is just a bonus. So if they want to cut some corners and drop the quality for a few frames per episode, that's really not a big deal to me, especially because they're working from home. I mean, they're doing a really good job considering the circumstances. This was another 10 out of 10 episode. <laughs> no, 17 out of 10 episode. And the highlight for me was definitely the final scene, but I also think this episode... 
I like the Roswell scene way more. That that whole revelation. Again, I just have a bias for the Roswell scene. So it had some of the best voice acting so far this season, and the new music was just fantastic. The new clown theme too. He only notices the fucking new soundtrack for the toy box theme for a million mind broken. Yo, we got like part two clown music coming in too. Well. Not that I would know, but I think watching ReZero is probably better than sex. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Why not watch ReZero and fuck at the same time? Did. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section. I still read every single one. That's the truth. I'm not lying. If you guys want to support this series, though. Uh, is there anything else? No, I think this is just basically uh, him just uh, plugging at the end. But here's the video, guys. Please go give Mr. Echidna a like on the video. Check out his channel if you haven't. And I will see you next time.